Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer, we can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C, Certified Brewhead. And I'm Tiffany, Liquid Enthusiast. And welcome to episode 13, my lucky number, of a link-up series here on BAOS. This has been, uh, uh, now we're coming into our second week of series three for link-up. Last week, you can check the pod with Brasserie General. That came out amazing. Obviously, yeah. great chat with, uh, with Max. The beer was phenomenal. This week, we're moving from Quebec back to Ontario. Um... With a brewery that's become like, you know, Tiff knows I've been ranting and raving about um, these guys He's since I uh, yeah. discovered them yeah. late last year, yeah. I believe. Um, huge fan. Very honored uh, that they're down to work with, link up with this. Uh, very excited for the beer. I'm just going to bring it right on in, guys. Please welcome Andrew from Fine Balance in Kingston, Ontario. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Oh, I had you muted. Uh, wow. Oh, he muted you wow. one second. He muted you. Okay, now you're good. <laughs> Look at that. Amateur. <laughs> I was just saying, I'm very, very happy to be here, I was saying. So, awesome. yeah, That's fantastic. The whole pleasure. crowd is. The whole crowd. Heard, the whole crowd is <laughs> the whole excited. <laughs> Everyone is stoked. So, yeah. first things first, we're going to get into this gorgeous uh, bad, oh, yeah, what? bad boy right yeah. here. The Fine Balance Link Up Pale Ale. Uh, mate, I'm Ant. Tell us about this one, dude. Yeah, so uh, we decided, well, we threw around, threw around a few ideas as to what we would brew. Mm -hmm. um, and really what it came down to was this idea of beers for everyone. You know, on your, your link up website, it's prominent there as you go in. Um, so our first idea of maybe doing a double IPA or something really heavy kind of got thrown out the window. Okay. Um, just thinking that, uh, you know, we like, we love to brew IPAs, you know, heavily dry hopped ales, but let's do something that's a bit more accessible or approachable, I suppose, that Smart. could maybe, yeah, attract a wider interest in our beer drinkers, because awesome. certainly we have, yeah, we have a lot of huge fans of our oats and cream or some of our double IPAs, but um, yeah, they're maybe not as quite as accessible. So something that's a pale ale that can get people into the style I thought kind of made sense with the sort of goal of, of link up. Love it. Um, I, I've noticed that a bunch as well. Like, yeah, I, I think that's a really great point. It Making great. something that, yeah, it smells amazing. Um, that is accessible, that is uh, approachable. So it's not like some people are scared of oats and cream. We've talked about this before. You guys should definitely check out the pod that we did. I yeah. um, can't remember what episode it was, but, you know, I've never seen a brewery have a lactose uh, IPA or oat cream IPA as a flagship. But, you know, on paper, I can see why it's a little scary for folks, even though yeah. in reality, it's quite, it's not at all. Yeah, for sure. And definitely, I mean, the, the concept of, yeah, beer is for everyone, that sort of tagline, it, I think it falls in line with our idea, idea of or, um, vision for balance, right? Like we do want to make a wide range of beers and beers that uh, attract sort of different audiences for each one. And this is one that I think can sort of be at the intersection of a few different groups. So, Right. Um, what did yeah. you go with as far as the, um, the hop bill here? Yeah, so we uh, dry hop this with Citra, uh, Citra Cryo, and um, Vic Secret, uh, which is the first time we've actually used Vic Secret. Oh, yeah? How'd you feel about it? Um, like it. I like it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's great uh, I think it's pretty sort of milky. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> comes from a good place, right? Um, yeah. yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's sort of, you know, creamy, milky, silky. You get those kind of tropical notes, pineapple a little bit, or, you know, just something that's easy drinking, approachable, a good introduction to sort of most of our IPAs, I'd say. Yeah. Modern that's... New England IPA. Okay. That's, uh, that's exactly what it needs to be here. Let's put that photo. Oh, grab, the, grab the glass there. Ready? Sorry about that. You know the vibe. You know no what worries. we have to do, yeah. Um, did we should... cheers yet? We didn't cheers, no. Oh, okay. oh. Cheers. Cheers. Bro, cheers. I was taking photos. Cheers. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> We're going to do the content at the same time. Mm. I want to give a shout out to my glass. It's from uh, Talia in Brooklyn. Nice. Cool. Brooklyn's first uh, all-women-owned brewery. Ooh, nice. Uh, they make some really nice stuff. And the glassware, it's not maybe not showing up so well on here, but it's, all it's like really gold. dope. 
Yeah, it looks like gold. Yeah, it's yeah. gold and yeah, it's just really nice. Are they um Latin women? Uh, oh, am I, I think thinking of a different one? It's there's a there's a, a partnership. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's awesome. But so my sister-in-law lives in Brooklyn and turned us on to this beer. She always I'm always trying to get her to bring back you know other half whatever. And this is breweries right in her neighborhood. That's nice. so perfect. Yeah, that's um, cool. I love that. I love it. Latin. It's very perfect uh, for this podcast to be given. Yeah, rocking the glass. Yeah. Very thoughtful. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's why. That's why I pulled it out of the. Yeah. <laughs> Not even went with the fine belt. Look at that. You took uh, you took the the mission over the branding. I love yeah, it. Yeah, look at that. I love it. That's Dedication. Right. Yeah. Um, this is spectacular, yeah. buddy. Yeah. It's very much in line with uh, what you guys do. It's only five point five, so like you said, super crushable. Tons of flavor without yeah. being overkill, without sort of doing no. too much. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a pretty light, fairly light body. Um, mm. Five point five percent ABV. Again, trying to be sort of accessible. It didn't kill it with hops, but certainly you get mm. a lot of out of it. Yeah. I feel like you can really get that Vic Secret. Vic Secret has this, um, I was going to almost say, it's not like not tannic, but it's along those lines with what it does in your mouth. Like it, it's really kind of drying. I noticed it's yeah. just one thing. So you can really detect the Vic Secret through that sort of signature citra that is obviously the, the killer stuff. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it works really, really well. It's 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 going to please the more seasoned you know drinkers who this is you yeah. know this is exactly what i like to have is like when you have a crispy and i'll move on to something like this yeah. this is i'm digging pale ales a lot lately yeah man i think yeah, it's I only season wanted, for like, a pale ale too yeah. yeah i also just only wanted double ipas for a really long time <laughs> um so it's uh it's nice to kind of like scale back a little bit you know we small. need a break yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think yeah, breweries like Third Moon started making big pale ales, right? And it's like, yeah, we should try to do that as well. Like, it's it's fun to make a big double, but um, yeah, if you yeah. can get some of that same sort of aromatic enjoyment out of a pale ale, why not? Exactly, and maybe I think it's just like pale ales evolved and started tasting better. Maybe it's just mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's what you all good breweries yeah. are doing. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. funny enough you mentioned Third Moon. We saw Chris a few weeks ago when we were out that way, mm -hmm. and he was saying that exact thing. He said that the, it seems a, a tension, like double IPAs aren't moving like they used to, so they moved into the single mm -hmm. IPAs and the pale ales, but they make them big because I think it's Thank like you. like we were obviously saying um, people need a bit of a break. Yeah. You know, it's probably not the yeah. greatest for the waistline. As and they're just the as flavorful now. I feel like yeah. they're just yeah. so as good, and then it's not like 9% or something like that. So you I don't know if it's doing Yeah, you can yeah. have more, but oh, yeah, it feels good. Um, yeah. This tastes Yeah, there's not this as awesome. much sugar in here. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Not even close. <laughs> not as much sugar in so, no. It's got a nice sweetness to it as well, speaking of that, which is one of my yeah. favorite things. Yeah, a little bit of sweetness. Just yeah, a touch. Yeah. 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 Um, no man, it's I th am I getting? I, th I think it's still the big secret. Is there any sort of like a, a hot burn, like that greenness or some sort of bitterness? Or there's a little, a little bit, yeah, a yeah. little bitterness at the back there. Um, I love that. Keeps it a little interesting and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, man, this is uh, this is fire. And the the label I wanted to to talk about because this is one of our we yeah. mentioned this a few times. One of our favorite things on uh, from doing this is. Very often, the first we see of the, the the product is in your social post. Sometimes, I think yeah. you might some have seen people it. send it sometimes before. Some people send it, but yeah. nobody has to. Some people just go, "Hey, is is this cool or whatever?" Which they yeah. don't need to. But um, I think it's. And I super... don't think we did that. So apologies. Oh no no no! no, no you, you don't, don't need to. to at all. Yeah yeah yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, tell us about the uh, the artwork here. Yeah. So again, we're thinking about you know, the project, you know, link up. I wanted to have, we wanted to have beers for everyone on there somewhere. So mm -hmm. yeah, you see it in the margin there. Mm -hmm. um, we initially had some thoughts for a more intricate design. Definitely, obviously I looked back at what some of the other breweries had done and um, there's some really beautiful uh, can designs. And for us, we thought, what can we do that's gonna, you know, let the cause or the idea be center stage? but also fit in with our sort of aesthetic. And in general, we try to keep things simple, clean, crisp. Yeah. Um, we did have a local, we had a local designer help us with this, but it's obviously not super complicated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just wanted Link Up to really be the centerpiece and no distractions. So people hopefully will see it and ask about it. Yeah. Hopefully they'll see that beer is for everyone in the margin there and ask about it. Um, 
yeah, that's basically it. Try and keep, you know, something that's modern, clean, um, with the brand forward, obviously. I like that you use the, and, uh, the yeah. little arrow there, which is like sort of part of our logo. So like you kept the, For the sure. arrow yeah. between yeah. the words. That's cool. Which is dope. I thought, they like, see, that's the type of subtleties that I really appreciate. Just yeah. like using that in a way that's unique to your can design that fits with your brand because yeah. that's what we do. Uh, we don't interfere at all. Um, yeah. That was the point, not to interfere at all. It's supposed to be a nat very natural and... Um, like yeah. organic yeah we're that... not like taking over and making it do something different or same anything. with the style yeah, yeah. So but this... certainly it's a bit daunting at first you know to we had some ideas and they weren't really panning out <laughs> i'd say and then go kind of go back to the drawing board it's like let's keep it simple like what is this about and yeah let's just put the the name on there yeah in, in big letters and hopefully that's it but yeah, um, I love the beers for everyone on the on the side too. It's just cool. Yeah, I don't yeah. think anyone had used that yet, actually. Uh, from maybe memory. Nickelbrook, dude. Oh yeah, maybe they did. But either way, it wasn't like it's not yeah. super common. Not everyone. Yeah. Um, which is which is cool that that's yeah. what you pulled from everything that like you've seen the the assets, the website, the social, and everything, and then be like, hey, that makes sense to have on the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I was saying, it, it's. I mean, we try to be as much as possible cohesive and sort of coherent right have everything kind of go together so just thinking about the style of beer and yeah that the idea the concept behind the, the link up program and all that just kind of made sense but it's certainly it's not overly complicated but uh, no. we like it no it's great it goes with the rest of your branding too yeah i think yeah, which, is, yeah. which is simple and, and super effective so with that this is this is brilliant so as far as you know you guys are only uh, two years old, right? We were just talking well, about. Not even, yeah. Not year even. Okay, two at the end well, of the year. Just over a year and a half. Year okay, and a half so that's year, yeah. very young. Um, you know, yeah. what made you want to get involved with something like this, particularly at such a young sort of stage for the business? Yeah, well, I guess um, you know one reason why we got into craft beer as an industry, or I did at least, was to be able to do things differently, right? To not um, to have creative control and to definitely value the community and be part of the community that we're in and um, try and be progressive, whatever that means, you know, in some ways. Um, so right when we opened, we, we did a few little projects. Um, we did a beer for the food bank um, in December, sort of a month after we had been open. And that was good, but it was thrown together really quickly. And, you know, we had a sticker label that went on the can right. um, and then sort of, we did another one, I think, in March or, or April of that year, which is, was in conjunction with a, a run club that we have at the brewery uh, Wednesday nights. You know, we just talking to some people after running, uh, threw around the idea of trying to buy running shoes for the local Boys and Girls Club. And what could we do? Well, we could we can do a beer. We didn't have a lot of money to give, you know, to donate, but we certainly can make beer and give the proceeds back. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, we were mainly doing really small batch stuff. So we might do 600 cans and, you know, give $2 a can or $1.50 a can if we could. And that was great. Our scale is still, you know, really small. Um, but what was, I guess, a bit frustrating at some point was that it was sort of so hodgepodge and all over the place. And mm. so we, uh, I think it was probably in December of last year, I reached out to Ren at Beer Diversity and, um, just tried to well engaged her uh, to help us sort of develop a program and be systematic about it. Um, so she helped, I think, through you know met her met with her a few times through January and February of this year, mm -hmm. and came up with what we're calling our quarterly collaboration project. Nice. So our QC, yeah, QCP. So every quarter we have a beer that we're doing that's you know to donate money back, but also every release. Um, we're doing some sort of event around it. So actually this podcast is the event that we're doing. That we can promote on. <laughs> yeah, we can promote on social media and, you know, hopefully people will check it out and they can learn about it. Um, so this will be the second uh, quarterly collaboration we've done this year. Um, the first one was Brave Noise, which I'm nice. sure you've yeah, yeah. heard yeah. about. Um, Very cool. Yeah. So for that one, we, we partnered with um, employment agency here that does uh, immigrant services and immigrant employment so we we obviously gave the proceeds to that of the beer back to them mm -hmm. on a large scale which was nice so instead of a thousand i think you know we i think wrote a check for two thousand dollars but 
it felt uh, nice. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's really cool. But in addition to that, we did a, an, a, a virtual tasting event where we could actually have members from Keys, that's the name of the organization, come and talk about their program. We also partnered up with, there's a local um, women's beer drinking club, so they participated in the call just to talk about what it's like you know, to be uh, women in the craft beer community in Kingston, because there's some overlap there between the two kind of groups. And uh, yeah, it was really great. We had, you know, maybe 40 people turn out for the call. And nice. we sent out some sample packs and we had people from all over the province, which was fun. So that link up would be our second uh, of the year. And it just, it fits so nicely within this structured framework that yeah. we developed with, with Ren's help. And um, yeah, it gives me comfort to know that we have these targets and these deadlines to make, you know, so yeah. every four months, because time can, well, we sort of, we know time can just go. Yeah. And we need to remember like why we're here. We're here hopefully to make money at some point, but also to make a good product and connect with people. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and give back if we can and form partnerships and so on. So, yeah, so this is really fits in well with that. That's I really love second. that. We have our third and fourth ones lined up for later this year as well. So. Oh, wow. You're already done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, we haven't, we haven't brewed them yet. And we, we have some details to figure out there. Uh, and we'll have, to, we'll have to figure out, so what's the companion piece to that? Because I do mm -hmm. think, and I think Ren would agree, like, this is important too, like, to get together and talk about it. Mm -hmm. so the beer can come and go really quickly, but um, hopefully if people tune into this and they hear about link up and they maybe do a little more research and are more thoughtful about the industry it'll um, make change contribute to positive change so so yeah thanks for for doing this series because i think it's it's nice to have that as companion piece no i'm glad thanks man yeah. this is because we thought it was yeah. interesting that to to heal exactly what you said you nailed it like i think it's important to hear from the people who made the decision mm -hmm. to get involved in this yeah. so that you know, one of the criticisms, a lot of like, you know, I think the Black is Beautiful is fantastic. Um, we had Marcus from uh, Where the Souls on the Pod, and he, like, it's really come from such a great place. I think that the, um, it's been, uh, people have said that maybe some brewers are going, they'll do it to look good, and then they maybe don't even donate or just kind of move on. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this puts right. a little more onus on everybody involved to yeah. really kind of, you know, explain why, you know, you got to see the fire and talk to, to everybody sure. and explain it so i think it's it is really yeah. good and it shows them the dedication yeah it doesn't feel like checking off a box and just be like cool i did that big thing that everyone wanted me to do it's like no i'm taking this to another level and i'm putting yeah. my time really to this as well yeah i do like the system yeah. the systematic approach to this though like holding yourself accountable and committing to a certain number of like give back say initiatives like corporate social yeah. responsibility um you know like yeah. making sure that yeah. you have that baked into your business model is very cool and i love that right yeah. yeah yeah it's, she's yeah i mean i think uh she was great in sort of pushing us to make it public too obviously you know we want to make it public but that's a commitment mm -hmm. and not only that we so this quarter collaboration project we solicited feedback from our community, right? Like if you have um, a cause that you think we should consider, please let us know. Nice. And um, the, the fourth one we're gonna do later in the year emerged from that. So I think that's really nice. You know, it's, it's everything we do <laughs> as much as possible, we try to be or, uh, authentic, mm -hmm. you know, and, and organic about it. Um, because I'm, I used to be more cynical, I think about some of these sort of performative acts. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like, is it genuine or not? And is it, if, yeah, we don't have to get into it, but like, you know, if you're a for, for-profit business trying to profit off of one of these projects, is that ethical or not? But That's fair. I think you guys are holding, you're trying to hold people accountable too by having this conversation, which is nice, like you're saying, Craig, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the yeah, you're right about the, even just giving back as well, so putting back into it. But we're also conscious of, you know, one of our partners, obviously, Sankey and Baron, who's a brewery, so they are very yeah. aware of the, you know, we're not trying to bleed anybody. Yeah. And we yeah. came up with sort of the figure to donate as like just an average of what it, the, the size of the breweries we're typically yeah. going to work with. That should be pretty doable. So it's not like all the profits, yeah. so then you're doing it for nothing. Like, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's a pretty rough time in 
you know, history right now and, and everyone's yeah. kind of been going through it. Hopefully we're on the other side of it, but, um, you know, we want to make sure that every, we're not trying to take everything from it. So that's why we, you know, every sort of initiative yeah. has its own thing. And yeah, it's, um, it, it's but this is something that's relatively easy for breweries to do, I think. Right. We try Versus to make it just way, yeah. like, yeah, like you're making a beer, you're going to sell the beer anyways. Yeah. Um, you know, strategically we, we, we don't really spend money on marketing that much. Like, straight marketing, but we do a lot of things that are marketing related or right. give us good press. Like if you can not lose money, but get good marketing out of it, it's also a good thing to do on the other hand. So great point. Um, not that we're doing this just, we're not doing this for marketing per se, but, but it's going to be a win. Yeah. You, you can find a way. Yeah. You can yeah. find a way to do it. It's not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're brewing a good beer and selling it. So yeah. And yeah. we definitely want it to be exactly right. So it's like, you're going to be doing it anyway. And that's part of the, part of the reason why we don't bust anyone's ass about mm -hmm. um yeah you have to be this style or yeah. we have to come up with the collab together because it yeah. just puts extra pressure you might just already have a pale ale in the pipeline you're like oh this is perfect yeah. for link up and that's completely fine with us yeah because it's we want this, yeah yeah to be as plug and play just, for breweries just as reduce possible. the barriers reduce all friction and it's like participate it's an important cause and like yeah make it easy to yeah. do so yeah. yeah yeah and you're getting so many breweries to participate right which is pretty amazing so yeah it's like six or so each it, each series awesome. yeah, there's a yeah. decent amount you know we're yeah. keeping it you know, and they've been really everyone's been really like super, amazing super, uh, amazing is yeah it's, <laughs> amazing, right, it's just super cool anyone who gets involved with stuff like this are, are always great humans so this has been like a yeah. a genuine pleasure to to do the whole time and mm -hmm. relatively simple few you know things come up someone had a this series had a issue with the beer that they were going to hey can we do this beer instead i'm like Maybe you want yeah. it's no problem. And they'll like, oh, sweet. <laughs> you know, and it's great sweet. because that, that removes the pressure. And then if they had a production issue, we're really trying to stick to these six weeks. So yeah. that allowed us to, yeah. they had something else that they didn't have a branding and stuff for, so they could easily swap that out with no stress yeah. um, for the whole situation that allowed to keep it running. So yeah, it's, it's in hindsight, it looks like it's all kind of working out uh, nicely. So for you nice. guys, um, you know, in Kingston, and uh, you know, obviously not. It's a one of the biggest cities in, um, you know, Ontario. It's not Toronto. Um, so I would, yeah. I'd be curious to hear what your general. Oh, I'm positioning that saying it's not Toronto in that you know the diversity that maybe is in the area. It probably wouldn't be as, uh, you know, as as deep as as it would be in a larger city. So when you put your job ads out, like how diverse is the talent pool that, that are organically responding, whether it's ethnically or gender or any other characteristics? Yeah. Um, interestingly, I'd say, so when my, we first put job ads out um, before we were a proper brewery, it wasn't, we didn't have a very diverse talent pool uh, of applicants um, at all, really. Um, and I'm not sure why. I think I don't, I, don't think that Kingston is that diverse. Um, I think there's a diverse student population here, but okay. like other university towns, there's always an issue with retaining those students after they graduate, mm -hmm. even if it's uh, graduate school. Um, so it was harder then. I'd say we didn't have, yeah, we didn't have any, I think women applicants for our brewer positions wow. uh, when we first, first applied or first uh, posted. Um, obviously tap room staff is easier and sort of in the back end, when we think about diversity, we think about the whole organization. So if we can't get, if we don't have any applicants for, um, our brewer position, you know, what sort of applicants do we have for our front of house? Obviously we ha we've had a woman front of house manager who does an amazing job. That was easier to find in Kingston. Um, bookkeeper has been a woman since we started but that's easier to find right yeah definitely. um but second round of hiring now that we've actually grown a little bit it's been a much different story and i think two two things have helped one um having a bit of a reputation like being known within the brewing industry in ontario at least in some uh groups and two uh hire uh, advertising strategies Okay. Um, so having, you know, having followers on Instagram, uh, having people that can post your ad on Instagram helps. Mm -hmm. um, initially, we didn't post on Indeed. Now, Indeed wasn't necessarily the best place to post, but 
Tell us about it. You got a lot of <laughs> you got you got a lot of applicants, but once in a while, you know, you it is a broader net that you're you're casting. Yeah. Right? Um, so it's, again, talking to someone like Ren, she suggested that you need to obviously go as wide as possible. Um, and then the other thing that was really helpful for us is uh, connecting with Niagara Brewing College and getting them to post mm. on their Facebook internal Facebook page, which um, we we've, we've done that a few times and we've had applicants. Um, so we've had, you know, a few female applicants uh, just graduating from the Brewers College there, Brewmaster program that have been good. And I think at least one is probably going to work with us in some capacity, which would be Very nice. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard for sure. It's it's not, um, there's not a lot of diversity in, in Kingston. In right. terms of getting it. So it's about drawing people to the region, I think. Right. I think that's the goal and selling Kingston as a place, you know, a place uh, to want to come and and grow with us and enjoy a smaller community and um, an independent sort of city vibe. Mm. Yeah. That's a, that's an interesting point. As far as like, th this isn't the first time we've heard this where people have said that the, the place where they're based is just not a diverse place. So therefore, you know, what more can you really do? Yeah. But you make a great point that you know, part of this is attracting people to the region. Yeah. And we were, I was like, yeah. the time when I came to see you, I think that was uh, like November, late November last yeah. year, early December. Um, yeah. The whole area was so much broader than I was personally aware because I went to see uh, the guys at uh, Daft as well. And yeah. that where you are was a part of town I'd never been to and where they are was a whole other part of Princess Street that I'd never actually been to either. And I was like, oh wow, this yeah. goes back here because we used to come through, <laughs> we used to do music and we always tour and always hit Kingston. We had a whole bunch of friends there who mm -hmm. always put shows on. So I'd been to a very small Part, part of it, yeah. and that was it and then when we yeah. were leading back to Montreal we came back and we went to that similar area and there was like a big shop didn't like we a go huge to shopping something mall. or did we mall. literally just go to look oh we went to the mall we went to the mall and we're just like what's this whole other side of yeah because you hadn't seen it because yeah, I went by myself go. and then you were <laughs> we're big oh, I guess yeah. we just always went yeah we just always drove and went oh we go to direction. Division Street yeah. and we go to the A&W and the LCBO <laughs> and that's it and then drive back that's it yeah because before we used to go there was that burger spot oh we went to used to go Stone so if we did go, oh, that was probably right, right. The, the most that we went in was like Stone City. So then like after this, oh, yeah. yeah, it was very uh, interesting. I was just like, oh my gosh, like, it's just so much like yeah. larger than I yeah. realized. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of, it's very attractive. Like they've got, yeah. you know, you got obviously now more and more great breweries. Um, there's yeah. like one wicked cafe that we went to. I bet it's one of the few. That's yeah, that North awesome. Side or something. North North Side, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was that place was yeah. fire. Went and got a coffee from there. And it was yeah. as good Run as by Australians. Yeah. Oh, was yeah. it? Yeah. Owned by How Australians. How convenient. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not surprised because that's what we do. Yeah. The third wave coffee came from my city. <laughs> I should. Um, can I say something about the diversity thing though? Because actually, Please. I don't want to over. I don't want to overstate it because um, there is diversity here. Part of the onus on me, I guess, or like, you know, business owners is to find it too. So mm -hmm. I think um, I mentioned Keys Job Center. Connecting with them is really important. So that's something, they're a group that I've, because of my sort of background as an academic, I knew about them, but a lot of people probably wouldn't know about them, right? So you need mm -hmm. to have the right connections and educate yourself to know that. So they're a group that deals with sort of immigrant settlement. And so they, they're the people that see, you know, newcomers come to our region and they know what skills they have. And if you can hook up with a group like that um, and they can direct people to you right away mm -hmm. before they're sort of lost or they leave the region or whatever, um, then we could have a more diverse workforce in Kingston. But yeah. there is, is there's true? responsibility on the people that are doing the hiring to know about these programs as well. And Keys is trying really hard to like get their name out there, you know. But I'm sure those those programs exist in all these small cities. Yeah. I don't think anyone yeah. has actually brought that up before in terms of tapping hmm. like the job placement centers. Because That's a lot of people genius. go there. Yeah. It's actually giving sure me like a good idea to be. It's giving gonna, me an idea yeah. to be honest. Yeah, I want to be transparent here. Like yeah. with like what you have been extraordinarily like humble by saying that it's you know admitting that it is on you as a business owner to be able to do this, yeah. and it's on all the business owners, and it's also on us as you know yeah. trying to link people up. Trying to link people up, <laughs> right? 
So one of the challenges, yeah. like yeah. doing doing this, is the easy part for us. Setting up the collab, yeah. starting to raise some money to bring in some cash, so we can you know help people out with Cicerone and if we're going to do any apprentice and all that type of stuff, and really supporting people. Um, that's all pretty straightforward because we already knew each other. And most of the yeah. breweries uh, that are coming through, not all of them, but most of them we had a pre-existing relationship with because that's yeah. pretty much how this is yeah. going to work for now. And then eventually that'll tap out and it'll just be hopefully the idea of the keep growing. But the other challenge that we've been talking about internally was we have to be the ones, cool, we can tap into the industry and the ones who get it, like you get it and all the people participating in LinkUp get it and there's a bunch of other breweries who aren't participating who get it. But we need to bring people in and that's part of our job so yeah. you mentioning keys um we'll talk after but i would love to be connected with them because if we can let them know about what we do they can therefore yeah. and it's like we can support people in there who go through their channels who come to work with you for example yeah. like we could help sure, them get through yeah. cicerone we could cover their cicerone and make sure they're supported yeah. throughout their kind of journey in the industry whether they stay with you or move on or whatever it might be mm -hmm. Like, yeah. yeah, that's a really good idea because there are people looking for work. And if we can be like, hey, here's this program that can assist you getting some skills. Like, if you're coming in fresh, you don't know nothing for about sure, beer. Yeah. We yeah. can get you a yeah. Cicerone. We'll get you on the path. If you want to take some time, we'll get you all the yeah. way to the end. We'll pay for all of it. So yeah. if we can help people equip themselves yeah. to be better, yeah, uh, that's, you know. That's sweet. Yeah, I mean, that's how organizations like Keys make their bread. Like, they partner up with you know, fund people who have some funding. So mm -hmm. organizations that have funding. And then, so one of our first hires was from Keys actually. And nice. um, yeah, they, they paid, you know, half his wages or something for three months. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, like that was a bonus for us when we were starting. He was a good worker. He's still with us. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's great. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of organizers like that that would love to partner up with, with yeah. Link Up or, yeah. Whatever, so no, that's definitely because there are. Yeah. Speak about. No, it's good. It's yeah. it, it, that's super important because you have to be creative in this. Like, if you want to commit to having diverse applicants, having diverse people come in, like obviously partnering with yeah. LinkUp, that's a part, but that's only one part. It's like you have to reach out in different areas. Yeah. You can't just expect people to come to you because the yeah. the craft beer industry of in itself is not yeah. one that people might think of. Well, we know it's not like one of the places that a lot of diverse people think about applying yeah. for. So. Um, I think especially in um, like smaller, smaller towns or, yeah. you know, we have, yeah, we're a city, 140,000 people. That's fairly large, but um, mm -hmm. isolated. And there's a lot of smaller towns that once you're outside of those metro metro metropolitan areas, there's not a lot of diversity baked into those places. It's a lot of newcomers that are coming in um, that are attracted to the area for certain reasons. And uh, yeah, we also like as a city of Kingston, we need to retain those people yeah we need people to stay here to, so we can thrive and grow and you know be better so if we can somehow find a way to get them better jobs and, and creative work that's great so. yeah mm. no definitely yeah. Yeah. it's in, it's a real super interesting approach i love that i definitely want to follow up though about that to to continue going so um have you said so the other this is the first year obviously you're doing these other programs um in previous to this, had you been involved in stuff or this had just really been something that you always saw Fine Balance doing that was like a part of your uh, sort of mission for the company? Yeah. So like previous to Fine Balance? So, personally, or well, I was going to say the, even the, in the brink. previous to, to 2022 when you're doing the, the core oh, yeah. thing, had you... Yeah. So no, I was saying we, we just did a couple sort of ad hoc things. Like, yeah, we, we partnered up with the local food bank and, um, and uh, the, the Boys and Girls Club in our first yeah. year. Uh, but yeah, it was, it just wasn't structured, I guess. Yeah. Uh, right. So now it's it wasn't structured. coordinated well. So now it's just about having it organized and, and yeah. And uh, honestly, starting like the first few months of the business, things can, I realize that things can get away, away from you really easily. Mm -hmm. I still feel like that, like today and yesterday have been sort of hectic days where things yeah. are getting away and I'm feeling overwhelmed again. But, um, if, yeah, if you don't have choir. something in, <laughs> if you don't have something in place you're not going to get it done and then you know you need to think like why did we start this business like what are we here to do yeah like, yeah we want to do those things if we're not doing those things if we're not having fun you know if we're not connecting with people and building relationships then we could be doing something else you know 
Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it's sure. true. Um, do you have any goals from this structured program? Are there any sort of goals that you've built into all of this that you kind of want to achieve, whether it's a number of like a percentage of your workforce is diverse or yeah. any funds raised or anything like that? That's interesting. Yeah. Um, we have some like funding targets, I'd say it's, you know, around 10,000 a year. If we can do that, it'd be, that seems like a really big number for us. The diversity goals aren't as fleshed out. I think we, we do need to put some specific targets on that. Um, the excuse that I've been giving myself, I guess, is that we're still so small. Like we, we have three, four full-time employees with me, I guess. Um, but that's not really an excuse. So it's, yeah, it's about finding creative ways and uh, strategies to, to do better. And mm -hmm. it's, yeah, like I say, it's not the best thing, but I was really happy when we could hire a bookkeeper who was, you know, an immigrant person of color. Yeah. You know, she works for us for, you know, 10 or 15 hours a month, whatever it is. Like, it's a starting position. And I could, if we grow the way that we'd like to grow, she could be a main sort of player, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in the brewing side, I'm hoping that this program might help. You know, we, we're looking forward to a placement. If someone would like to do a placement with us at some point, I Thanks. think that'd be great. Um, we're definitely, I mean, I see the value of, of diversity and having more, just more voices and perspectives involved in the back, um, like in the brewery side of it. Um, I think it only help us grow and, you know, challenge us to be better and do better mm. and do new things, right? Every time we add a new person, <laughs> one person or two people that have been added in the last year, we get new ideas and we, and yeah. sometimes it's brewing related, but sometimes it's not like, sometimes it's, Oh, have you thought about doing this type of event? Yeah. That might, so we have a, we're starting a cycling club this week or we started last Saturday, I guess, nice. but it's a, you know, all welcome cycling club where, yeah, the person who runs it gives lessons on how to fix your bike and all this. And it's a pretty mm -hmm. diverse community that's coming to that cycling club, which is really, Ooh, that's good encouraging yeah the other thing that we don't need to talk about now is like diversity of customers right yes yeah which is like the flip side of it which is something that we think about a lot i mm -hmm. sort of alluded to it in the style of beer and all that yeah um the fact that we do a lot of sours and we have we'd like to have more non-alcoholic options available at some point but um it's it's yeah it's a whole other thing that is connected to this conversation about diversity of the workforce no, it definitely is because one of the things that we thought of, and that's why it's like you can attack this issue, say, in different areas in terms of the lack of diversity in the industry. And, you know, we chose the workforce because we also knew that if we get more people inside the inside the workforce, that's going to trickle down yeah. as well, right? Like, you know, when we, sure. if we, if I'm into beer, right? So I got into beer and what happened? I ended up getting my mom, my dad are drinking craft beer now. Do you know what For I mean? Sure. Like, so we, yeah. Yeah, we see how that gets down and that gets into the tap room. So it's like, you can't attack it in different ways. And one is like looking at the customers. Yeah. How do we do that? We have friends in the industry who host events and do all these things and they do really well at bringing, yeah. um, they've even started their own brewery as a result of just bringing so many diverse people in who want to support them so they can sure. start their own brewery. And then you have yeah. the other side, which is like, we know if we get people in several positions, they're going to bring that beer home to their family, their friends, and that's going to yeah. diversify too. So, um, yeah. no, the, I mean the the, the employment side is the center for yeah. sure. It's like yeah. the core, and everything builds out from there. Exactly. So. Yeah, I think you're you're bang on about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If we can get people to come into the tap room, because that's probably going to be the easier. Yeah, like Solution. that's also key. Like if you come into the tap room and you see someone, yeah, even just like someone, yeah, sure. like someone of color hanging out at the thing, yeah. you might just think, you might be like, oh, okay, that's interesting, you know, like, like, For all right, sure. like, what's yeah. this brewery saying? And then you start, you, you, you start thinking about it. You start thinking about the positions and like, um, so I think that's key too. So like the cycling thing, that's great because they're going to come, they're going to yeah. know your brand, they're going to know your business, and then eventually one of them might be down to to work with you. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're we're definitely like yeah you know, we're thinking about how to do more events in the in the top room space that will open it up. So next week is Pride Week in Kingston, so we're we're hosting a Pride trivia. Um, hmm. You know, just like something small, but it should yeah. be fun, and it'll like we're hang we're literally going to hang a flag on the window, you know, yeah, for the week that says "Come in, everyone's welcome here." Nice, you know, which yeah. is which is 
yeah, small but but good. No, I'll... I love that you're doing that. Like you're not just doing a logo change, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's like the easy mm -hmm. one. They're like, ah, oh, here's my there, here's my logo, Justin yeah. Rainbow. Then I'll be here from June first to thirtieth, guys, and then I'm gonna back on <laughs> out. So you know, so you're not doing that. You're I, actually. I have a tough time, like about. Yeah, I can't do a logo change. I don't know. Like maybe I should. I. No, I mean, honestly, I, I think it's kind of. We've actually mm -hmm. advised against companies against and our clients even. Mm -hmm in transparency doing it unless like if the client says like hey i want to do this thing like i want to celebrate this day or i just want to do i want to do pride yeah. that always comes up every day i want to do pride logos i'm like cool what initiatives yeah. do you have so like when someone says like cool you changed yeah. your logo what are you doing and if you can't say like oh we have this system and we have this erg yeah. we have this system in place something that's happening then it's un that's... feels fault is not back so i think it's better to be tightened and buttoned up on the inside and then that's when like the logo is the last thing that's just like an extra signal but it, it's what yeah. you're doing it's the same thing as the blm it's the same thing as the can yeah. you know, the, the black yeah. square or the all of that right it's like yeah. it only means that it's something if you actually are doing trying something. yeah so like you're showing example you could have put up a black square but you're also here now <laughs> in link up so yeah. you're but you're attaching it to something right you didn't just do it and you're like okay cool yeah. i did it here you go, guys. You know, like, yeah, and you're broadcasting it, and you're, yeah, you're their first brewery in the series to the promote fall, it's the, the follow-up and yeah. the yeah, yeah. Like, this is what matters, you yeah. know. So, yeah, I think you're. I appreciate. No, I, I think you're right. I appreciate what you're saying. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, it it makes sense. That it, it aligns with my uh, sort of unorganized thoughts about it. <laughs> yeah, if, if you're doing something about it, then. Then, that's yeah. the most important thing. That's, it, yeah, that's the most logo. Important. The logo should be the last thing. It, it should yeah. be like you're doing all these other things, and then the logo's the cherry on top. Yeah, exactly. If you're starting exactly. with the logo, then you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You got real events happening. You know. Just, yeah. And you're yeah. doing real thing, and you've committed to real action. Yeah. yeah. And you're putting your money where your mouth is. And I think that's yeah. all anyone can do. And you keep, I know you're being humble again by saying it's small. It doesn't matter how small it is, though, because I think it's it's everything, you know, changes their uh, uh, sequence of smaller things, yeah, small steps. Incremental. And exactly. exactly. And, you know, any little thing that you're able to contribute, everything counts towards, like, if you even think about, like, the money that you are donating to Link Up is, at the very least, would get, would pay for 10 scholarships for. 10 people to level one Cicero, approximately. Yeah. yeah. So that's 10 individuals sure. that you specifically could have directly impacted because there's nothing, we don't have any, our administrative costs are basically nothing. Yeah, so, so the money's yeah. for everybody. The money just goes right yeah. back to the people. We don't get yeah. paid, so it's like... I guess that's the point of a non-profit. Well, <laughs> so, yeah. with a, a nimble, small non-profit that yeah. doesn't have yeah. all these things to pay yeah. for, right? We don't need money for much. Yeah. So it goes right back to the people. So if you think that that's what you're doing, and those 10 people... Can go off and get jobs into in the workforce and you, you know you already talked about the trickle down from them once they're in there and they'll tell their friends and family blah 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 like that's impact and it might just be the thing about all of this is taking action now so that in one two three five years we're going to see a lot more real change and i think really that's what you know that's yeah. all really that's what matters here yeah um yeah well said and with that, the last question I want to ask was, and I asked it Max of BG this one last episode randomly, and I think this is a good one. For other breweries who are looking to get involved in, and you're actually the perfect person to ask this, like whether it's to get involved in Link Up, but not necessarily us, just involved in any sort of um, activities like your whole, you know, your quarterly program where you're actually yeah. doing something proactive and giving back like where would you you know do you, and say a brewery wants to diversify their workforce you know cool they can send us an email we'll post their uh, job ads yeah. on our on our job board the plug beautiful but what what could people do what would you suggest to a brewery who's like man i don't know where to start how do i find people yeah. what what what's some good action because i think that's what a lot of people yeah. get confused yeah. and maybe stuck in you know stuck in place because they just don't even know what to do and they're like, ah i'm gonna let it go you know yeah, that's it's an interesting question. Um, I don't know. I think maybe just talk to people. <laughs> like, there's some uh, apprehension that people have to being vulnerable and just asking questions of people that have done something that they want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think the best advice I would like, if anyone wants to ask us questions about what we're doing, it's not we don't have it all figured out. Like we're all just trying to make it happen and figure it out right mm -hmm. i was we we're lucky enough to work with ren that was great i would 
I suggest that she's a great person to work with, or yeah, you two seem to have absolutely great insights, obviously, like running this program. So I think talking to people is the, the, the first thing. The second thing sort of practically is to just sit down and map it out. Like what would your dream scenario look like? What might be practical? You know, what could you do? Like I always personally find just like putting pen to paper sometimes is really yeah. helpful. Um, but yeah, I think research is, that's what sort of one of our mantras, you know, where anyone that we talk to uh, in the brewing industry for the most part has been open and honest and supportive. Uh, I think we're lucky we're talking to like the good people mm -hmm. <laughs> for the most part, you know? Um, yeah, so that's what I'd say. That's great. Awesome. That is perfect. Well, look, this is great, man. Andrew, thank you so much for your time, dude. I know, like I said, this is always hard for me because it's so short. I think you've gone forever. But uh, <laughs> this is this is great. I think you're going to get some really insightful uh, yeah, answers definitely. and responses. Yeah. To you already it. gave us a new idea that I'm going to go look further <laughs> into, which is like yeah. plotting or plotting like the uh, job Job, job centers. Uh, job centers. The job centers. So I think that's that interesting start. to be. Um, yeah, we start with them, but like, there's. I know a few in Toronto yeah. already that people go to. Like, it's so smart to oh, do yeah. that as well. Yeah. And just to see what we can make some real impact. So thank yeah. you for the inspiration. It's cool. Um, yeah. Stick around. We'll wrap this up. Stick around, and we'll we'll finish up off sure. the call. But let's take the thumbnail real quick, and then we'll uh, awesome. get everybody. Oh shoot, that's not it. Oh, there it is. Okay. There we go. All right. Hold that bad boy. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Glorious. Andrew, where can everyone find Fine Balance Online, bro? Uh, FineBalanceBrewing.ca and at Fine Balance Brewing, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Perfect. Consistency. And Thank love you. it, love it. Very important. And where yeah. can everyone find yeah. the link up beer? So it's available at, uh, at, this, yeah. at the brewery. It's available at the brewery um, on our website. Tomorrow we're sending out a bunch of beer um, around Toronto and that area. So I would say check out some sort of local bottle shops um, who might be having. I know the Society of Beer Drinking Ladies. Are they doing a collab? They are. Uh, oh, they have been amazing. They're helping us do it. Yeah. A, um, so they're they're stuck in it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to yeah. talk to Erica. Yeah, she's. Uh, we're doing a tap handle. I'll tell you about it afterwards. But we're doing a tap handle yes. program that we're going to have like Sweet. the community tap in the. Uh, you know, at the we're going to launch it yeah. with the Society Clubhouse and. Uh, Awesome. Start. Eric is going to help us get it out there more to bring revenue stream, awareness, blah, blah, blah. You yeah. know the vibes. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew, once again, man, thank you so much. Uh, everybody, if you yeah, enjoyed the so. episode, smash the thumbs up, hit subscribe below, hit the notification bell <laughs> so you know when the new new drops. Follow us everywhere at BAOS Podcast. Check out the long form audio. We drop every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and these episodes, I think we're going to start rolling them out soon. When it's out, you'll see it, but it's going to be uh, every week for six weeks as well. Um, Andrew, appreciate you, brother. And don't forget to follow. Yeah. Link up oh yeah, everywhere. look up here. Thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> yes. I got in my uh, <laughs> my routine at Link Up Beer everywhere. Linkupbeer.org is the website. So we have the plug job board. So if you're a brewery, and Andrew, that's for you too. So anything that comes yeah. up, shoot us an email. I'll make sure we get that up um, to promote it. Even if it's an Indeed link, it's cool. Um, and uh, we'll link out to it to make sure that people can see it and. We also, if anyone wants to apply to be in the program, we have an applicant uh, form on the website there. So you just fill that out. You talk to the lovely Danielle. She will uh, make sure you get what you need and we'll put you through and uh, we'll get it going. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. All right, Joel. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Cheers.